the main man, Drew Dober, who returns to action on the 12th of March when he faces Ricky Glenn in the UFC fight night. Drew, good to sit down and chat. How are things with you today? Oh, fantastic. You know, when, you, when you're training with a purpose and you got an opponent ahead of you, it's always good times. How does it feel? What is kind of the contrast training out of camp and cramps training out of camp? What, what is that kind of difference like for you? Uh, as far as this fight in particular? Just, just in general. A little bit of a technical difficulty there, but Drew, as I mentioned, what is it like training out of camp in terms of or compared to training in of, in camp for you? Yeah, uh, you know, out of camp, I get to play with some new tools, new some new tricks. Um, uh, this uh, long layoff in particular, I was kind of just uh, implementing some new strategies and new things uh, that I feel like I need to, you know, uh, put forth and, and move forward with. And then now when you get that fight scheduled, then it's just uh, the meat and potatoes. The, we, we stick to, you know, uh, the, the, the stuff we usually work with and uh, we dance with the person that brought us. So, <laughs> What are your opinions on your upcoming opponent, Ricky Glenn? What have you seen as strengths and then maybe potential weaknesses you can exploit? Yeah, uh, tall, southpaw, um, tough. You know, I look at his fights like super tough. I, I like calling him Midwest tough. Um, <laughs> But as far as like his skills, uh, he's not excellent at any one thing. He's just good overall. And so it's, it's, it's nice to not fight a specialist this time around. So I think the strategy is simple. Um, so I'm just focusing on the things that I need to do. Uh, but man, he's, he's, he's super tough. So I, I'm, I'm ready to go to war for 15 minutes. I remember the last time we spoke, the first time we connected, I asked you a question about facing such different styles like Islam and then Brad Riddell back to back. And I remember your response was something along the lines of feeling like you're in blood sport, like you're going to a Kumite. So, so what discipline would Ricky Glenn perhaps be under in that uh, Kumite? Uh, man, the, uh, the big uh, guy from America, the, the one that has the bandana, you know, <laughs> like, just tough as shit, right? But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so... You know, I feel like he's he, he's good everywhere. He just, but his, his main attribute is like he's coming to win that fight, and uh, you know, with, with the wins that he does have, it's because his opponents have faded in the later rounds, and he keeps that same grit. So, I mean, I'm ready for it. Look, if there's one thing we know about Drew Dober, is you don't really seem to fade down the stretch. And what you're talking about there about Ricky Glenn about coming on strong at the end is that it, does that kind of style match up potentially? In, excite and intrigue you that this guy's going to be there for, for probably all three rounds? I mean, I think Sean Shelby and the UFC, they do their job well. Right? There's there's a reason we're fighting together. Uh, you know, it's because they, they know how I fight and then they know how, like, the opponent's going to fight. And, you know, with me, they're, they're guaranteed fight of the night, possibly fight of the year. So uh, I, I'm ready to bring it for the full 15 to 25 minutes. His last fight, Glenn, was quite a strange one. Uh, that draw over the quite highly touted prospect in, in Grant Dawson, uh, where Grant cut, took a couple of the early rounds and then Glenn came back home with the 10 8 at the end. So, were you impressed by that performance? What, what were your kind of opinions on, on that last fight? Um, you know, I, I watch it. So, like, Grant Dawson and me, like, we're really good friends. Like, we grew up together like, yeah. in, from Omaha, Nebraska. So, I was just watching that fight in, in sports of Grant. And, you know, I, I, I thought he had it in the bag. And then uh, <clears throat> when they considered it a draw, you know, my opinion, I think Grant just gave it to him. You know, it's like it was less to do uh, about the decisions that uh, Ricky Glenn was making and more so the decisions that Grant Dawson was making. So, I mean, he's, he's in it like Ricky Glenn, he's in it, you know, the, the full 15 minutes. Uh, but in that fight in particular, I think Grant Dawson gave him that draw. Yeah. I should mention as well, Grant is a previous guest and he is the man. And I think he'll go on to do great things, but, but it was one of them fights that I think I kind I kind of agree with what you're saying there, where perhaps if he tightens up a couple of things towards the stretch, it may have been a, a 29, 28 across the board. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I agree. And it's, uh, you know, I, I didn't think it was a 10 8 round when I first watched it. And so the draw took me by surprise. Um, but then when I rewatched it, because now I'm fighting Ricky Glenn, uh, I was like, man, like there's just a couple of decisions that, uh, you know, uh, Grant made in the third that like I won't make. And, you know, uh, no offense to Grant, but like I watched film and I'm not going to make those ones. <laughs> 
Have you spoke with Grant in anticipation of this fight? Has he given you any tips or tricks, given you've got a similar <laughs> opponent? As soon as I got the offer, I, I talked <laughs> to him immediately, and I was like, hey, guess who I'm fighting? <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm focused on this fight, and uh, I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but we're, uh, we're looking forward to doing some uh, cross-training together. So uh, come, you know, after this fight, I, I looked at, like, head out to Kansas City and, uh, you know, get beat up by Grant for a little bit. Yeah, um, you, well, obviously they've got a great thing going down there with Glory MMA with James Krause, who is just, I think James Krause, when when he was in his prime, I, I, I think people looked at him as someone who would be a good coach because he's so cerebral the way he views the game. And then mm-hmm. the way he's transitioned into this head coach role, he's, he's absolutely flying with the with the boys down there. Oh, yeah. Like, I've been impressed, I mean, uh, by just uh, uh, Kraus for a, a very long time, you know, just his decisions as far as, you know, what he's done with his gym, his career. And, uh, man, he's, he's a really impressive individual. And so, you know, I look forward to being able to, you know, get beat up by those cats. <laughs> um, you mentioned there about Ricky Glenn being a Southpaw. Who are you primarily working with in terms of sparring or in terms of drilling for, for that? For that uh, I've been elevation. we got some, some pretty talented Southpaws. Um, for Ricky in particular, you know, for like a taller southpaw, um, I got I've been working diligently with a uh, Bojan, a uh, former UFC fighter oh, yeah. from uh, Serbia. Yeah, Velikovic Vel- is that you can pronounce better than I can. No <laughs> offense to him, but <laughs> and, uh, his name gets shorter and shorter the more I know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, he, he's super tough super technical and he's got a fight coming up for himself in, in March. So we're on that same grind. So uh, I, ideally, I mean, my sparring rounds are tougher than this fight. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a very busy month, March for, for team elevation. Obviously yourself probably kicks it off. And then on that 26th of March card, we've got Neil Magny and the, I believe the co-main events and Curtis blades in the main. So, so what is the buzz around the gym? What is it like all, a lot of you guys in the, in the room have fights booked? Yeah, uh, I mean, we coincidentally all took like uh, some time off together, and then now <laughs> we're back on it. Uh, I mean, the 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 team is uh, just serious, and uh, yeah, just the the unity, the camaraderie. The I mean, we like we're all getting our work in together, and so man, it, it's always great when we're all following the same schedule. So we're all showing up, we're all pushing each other, we're all helping each other. And um, that's the beautiful thing about, uh, you know, about team elevation. It's, it's not just a meat factory where we just beat each other up. Like we, we really care about how one of each other is doing. So, uh, man, it's, you know, the family, you know, yeah, has the ups and downs together and we keep pushing forward. Yeah, of course. You mentioned there about a couple of ups and downs and I want to touch on last year, uh, back-to-back losses against Islam Makhachev and Brad Riddell. So when you come off back-to-back losses in what were quite, um, quite highly touted fights, quite highly, um, you know, attention fights, if you like. What is the kind of the reset moment? What, how do you, do you change training? Do you find certain tools? What kind of is the, the rebuild process after, after those? Defeats? Yeah, it's uh, the idea of you can't do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Like if you want change, you got to make some change. Yeah. And so we, we, we uh, took that time, what well, it's like, and we're close to eight months off <laughs> yeah. and uh we, yeah we we wanted to make some adjustments and we, we, with islam my jujitsu wasn't uh, offensive enough and then with brad Riddell, like my mind got away from me i was kind of fighting like an idiot um and so like i know what i'm capable of i mean when you look at like what islam's doing to these other guys with you know dan hooker like and i was able to take him in the third and then with like, brad Riddell. so i know what i'm capable of and it's, it's really all up in here. And so we had to make, make some adjustments and not just knowing it, but we had to practice it, you know, put it in our camp and then recycle it over and over. And uh, man, we're feeling really good with uh, this camp. You know, I think all the adjustments that we made, we were able to put in practice. And so, yeah, I just look forward to just showcasing it. Out of those two fights, this might be a difficult question, but out of those two fights, which was kind of more disappointing or more kind of frustrating for you? Uh, I think the Brad Riddell fight was the most disappointing. Um, with, with Islam, Islam was a, a tough problem to solve. And, uh, you know, he, he implemented his strategy and I didn't have a, an appropriate answer to it. But like, 
it was, you know, I feel like it was as expected, you know, like if Islam's going to beat me, this is the way he was going to do it. Mm. But with, with Brad Riddell, like I thought I was going to knock him out the entire time. Like I got this, like, this is in the bag. Like We're good. And, uh, and then he got the decision and it was like, man, so close. And like, it was to a point where like a takedown or a punch, one punch could have changed the outcome of that fight. So just being so close and not getting my hand raised was was devastating and uh, you can just tell by my reaction afterwards you know yeah did you, did you in the in that moment did you think you'd you'd done enough to to get two rounds and to, to seal the decision you know I, I think I was in question right like you look at your yeah. coaches because I mean third person perspective is a little different than first person and so yeah. I was just like did I win it and they're like oh, you know we feel like it I'm like that's not too assertive so like <laughs> I, I mean there was a saying and I was like, man, I think I did enough and this and that. And then of course they said his name and uh, I was, I was surprised, but uh, looking back and watching it, like I understand, but yeah, it still hurts. It's funny how, how people kind of, how perspectives change in the, in the world of MMA, because correct me if I'm wrong, but you were probably in terms of your UFC run, you were on the best run of your career. I would say prior to Islam with those three back to back knockouts over likes of Alexander Hernandez and, and Nasrat. So and then suddenly you come off a couple of losses and I see people online saying that Drew Dober isn't what he was two fights ago. So so what has kind of the last year been like in terms of, and I don't suppose you care about this, but kind of the outward perspective of, of how far people think you can you can get in this lightweight division? Yeah. Um, well, man, this is going to be a long answer. But uh, when I turned pro, I went one and two. And then mm. right out the gate in the UFC, I was 0-2. And, and then now with these back-to-back -back losses, it's like I have the ability to come back and come back strong. You know, losses don't affect me, right? Uh, so, like, I'm, I'm really eager to be back in that proving grounds. And that's all I consider this fight, you know, with Ricky Glenn. You know, I'm fighting a Midwest boy in the Apex Center, which is, like, no audience. And, uh, you know, it's been an eight-month layoff. And so, like, man, I just feel like I'm back in that grind, like, you know, so like I, I'm here to earn it and I'm here to win it and I'm here to like prove myself. Now, as far as like where I draw the confidence from in those last two fights, um, look at what Islam is doing, mm -hmm. you know, to his opponents. And uh, he wasn't able to do that with me. And uh, I, I gave him that submission a third because I was, I refused to lose by decision, you know? And so, and then, and then just watching uh, Nazareth. And now, like, he's taking Dan Hooker to do a decision, Bobby Green to a decision, and look what I was capable of. Yeah. So I, I I still feel like I know what I'm capable of. And the MMA fans are just, like, goldfish. It, you're, only, you're only as good as your last fight. And yeah. I lost my last fight. So, but come after Ricky Glenn, I mean, I might be just, like, a rock star again. Who knows? Yeah. But, like, yeah, I don't, I don't put too much value in, the, like, the fans' opinions. Yeah. You shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's funny. I mean, I love him to death. <laughs> like, I just, I love hearing all of it, whether it's you know, for me or against me. It's still fun. Yeah, of course. I've got to ask of that of that three fight run that I mentioned: uh, the Polo Reyes, Nasra Hakparast, and Alex Hernandez. Which is your favorite knockout of the three? They're all gorgeous in their own right. But which one is your favorite? Um... Man, it, it, <laughs> that's, that's such a painful question because I'm going to say Nazareth, but like, man, like, I like Nazareth. He's cool. But like, I, I didn't particularly enjoy knocking him out, but as far as like the prestige of that knockout was, was incredible, right? Like Nazareth had such a fan like backing and like he looked incredible in his training videos. Like I was like, I'm about to go to war. And, and the, the fact, like me being able to, you know, get it out in the first round, I was just like, well, I even surprised myself yeah of course um especially because if memory serves nasrat has never been stopped i don't believe that i believe you're the only man to stop him is that correct yeah, he was he was catching bobby green and, and and dan hooker and he was still standing on his own and even doing well so you know I, i'm always in the back he's just going like wow i can't believe i finished that <laughs> <laughs> uh, i want to quickly touch on this weekend's fight and um, because we've got a we've got an, an old an old foe and we've got the the guy coming in on 11 days notice in, in Bobby Green versus, versus Islam Makhachev. So, so I haven't been in with one of those guys. How do you see this, this fight potentially playing out? I, uh, man, Islam is a problem. And, and like, you may think you're going into the fight knowing you solved it, 
and then he puts his hands on you and uh man so like i love bobby he's fucking great like i, I really enjoy seeing his fights and stuff like that but if i'm putting my money on something it's islam's gonna get it done and he's gonna get it done the same way he always does throughout this conversation you've you've mentioned how your friend you have grown up friends with grant dawson how you really like Nasr Attack for us, even though he's an old opponent, and that how you really like watching Bobby Green fight. So I'm going to ask you, Drew, who is your favorite lightweight in the UFC, not named Drew Dover? Favorite lightweight in the UFC, Justin Gaethje. Other than Justin Gaethje, because Justin Gaethje is a wow. trainer, partner. Yeah. Uh, probably, uh, probably uh, other than that, Benil, Benil Darush, which is yeah, a past opponent, but like, man, I've been a huge fan of him, and then when I met him in person before the fight. So we were super chummy and like, we just got along and like, you know, we put emotions behind and we got our job done, you know, in the cage. And then even afterwards, like we both uh, video or FaceTime his niece to wish her a happy birthday. And like, anytime I'm out in an event, uh, like in his area, like him and I would just hang out. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Benil Darush fan and man, I was looking forward to the, the Benil Islam fight. <laughs> You're such a nice guy, Drew. I think that's it's just a, an easy thing to say. I don't think that's any going to come as any surprise to anyone who's ever watched a Drew Dober interview or a Drew Dober podcast. But have you ever had any bad blood going into a fight? Has there ever been an actual time where you've kind of disliked an opponent? Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Um, when I was an amateur, uh, like like back home in my hometown, like there was this uh, uh, another like super talented amateur, and he would just like run his mouth. And, uh, man, I just didn't like his demeanor. And so, um, yeah, so there was a lot of trash talking in that fight. And, uh, I, you know, I fought him, beat him as an amateur. And then we turned pro, and uh, I went uh, one and two, and he went three and oh. And so he kept running his mouth again. So we had a fight as a, as a professional. <laughs> and so I, I beat him then, too. But, yeah, as far as, like, a, a human that I didn't get along with, he was one of them. But fast forward, like, 10 years later, like him and I are cool now. May I ask his name so I can have a little bit of a look on your on your Wikipedia and maybe try and find yeah, the fight? His name is uh, Jimmy uh, Seipel. Okay. I'll check I'll check that out. I'm, I'm interested to see if, if Drew Dober in his early days was like the Bobby Green of today, you know, trash talking in the cage, giving it all of that, or if it was I mean, a little bit business as, business as usual. I mean, I will, uh, I'll look at my, my bank and see if I can find uh, some old clips or like videos of the trash talking and send it to you. It'd be fun to like add this. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I wanted to mention there because you did mention Justin. Um, how, how is things looking for, for his upcoming title fight? I know you're of course going to, to pick him in that match, but what have you seen and how are you, how have you kind of analyzed his, his training going in? You know, uh, you can't judge Justin uh, on, on his training. Uh, just because what he does well, he does it only in the fight, right? In, in training, like, he's constantly practicing new things. And so, like, yeah, he gets beat up in training. And uh, and, then, and then he goes on Saturday night and beats someone else up. So, uh, you know, I, I think, like, him and Trevor, like, he, they, they got a plan together. They're practicing it. and uh, But, like, you can't really judge. Like, he always looks good in the gym. But, like, he, like I don't know. Like, I, I don't really, training and fighting are two totally different things. And so I, I have all the faith in the world in Justin, but like in, in the gym, like you can't tell what he's doing. <laughs> I, I, I think the rumors are coming out that that, that fight's going to be um, in Brazil. Um, if there was ever a man who, who didn't, doesn't appear to be phased going into another man's home country, it might be Justin Gaethje. If anything, he, he comes across like he would, he would probably relish the moments of her and, what is it? No vamo here. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he's, he, he told me, he goes like, hopefully his fight's in Brazil. I want to fight in his hometown. <laughs> you know, like, so Justin's like actually excited to be in Brazil. So Crazy, crazy. I just want to turn the conversation a little bit back to yourself as well. Um, I believe we first connected in, in May, June, something like that. But if memory serves you, um, you got married last summer. Um, was, yeah. that, was that, yeah. So congratulations and and how has yeah. life been as a, as a married man the last six to eight months? Oh man, that's comfortable. <laughs> yeah. We got, we got married, went on a honeymoon. We got, we bought a house together. So like a, a lot of stability, a lot of comfort. And uh, man, it was kind of annoying towards the end. I was like, I need to, I need to mess things up a bit. So then I got a fight scheduled. So now I'm ready for some chaos. 
How long have um how long how long have you been with your wife? How many fights have, have you kind of been with her? Is she used to the process of you kind of going into into fight camp mode and probably being a little bit a little bit more grumpy and a little bit more tired and all of that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, she puts up with me, which you know, bless her heart, she's great. But uh, and she reminds me every time she <laughs> she sees the nerdy, lazy Drew Dober on a daily basis, right? And so she's like, it always like, dumbfounds me that you know you beat people up on like you know on camera in front of millions of people she was like i just see like the the loser drew that's chilling at his house <laughs> so <laughs> she says she's she puts up with it but it still surprised her every time yeah i can well imagine <laughs> um before we finish drew i've got one final question um we are at the start of 2022 now what are your goals for the next 12 months what do you want to accomplish in the next calendar year more fights more I mean, it got to a point where, like, obviously, I want to, I want to be a world champion, and I, and I want to be ranked. I want to work towards that, but it, it's not my number one. My number one now is to see how many fantastic fights I can get in before I'm retired. So, I mean, it, and the only way to do that is just step in the cage more often. So, you know, fingers crossed, we step out of the fight with Ricky, you know, clean, and if we can get something scheduled like back to back. I hate these long layoffs. I'm tired of them. We're, we're done with these. If memory serves, Ricky has a three and a half year layoff in his career, I think, between 2017 and 2021. And yet the fact that you call an eight month layoff, which in MMA can be, you know, with a, a serious injury can be quite standard. It only shows how much you love getting, you love stepping in there and getting back to action. Yeah, I mean, I started fighting when I was 16 years old. This is my life. This is what I've loved to do. And uh, yeah, no, I get I get antsy and bored, you know, with layoffs. I mean, I had to take the eight months to fix some things and to get married. Uh, but man, this is I, I love this. And uh, I dread the day that I can't you know, throw some gloves on. And so while I still have it, I'm working with it. Well, of course. And I think that. The rest of the MMA world will dread that day when 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 Drew Dober puts his his gloves on the mat and announces his retirement. But let's not talk about about sad sad times like that. Let's talk about the the good times and, and you know keep them rolling uh, as long as we can. Oh yeah, with Glover to share as a champion and uh, Andre Olaski with his last win. I mean, I still got like ten years. <laughs> I spoke to John Wayne Parr yesterday. Uh, John Wayne yeah. Parr is coming up to his last fight and he's forty six, so that gives you well over a decade. Um, if you want to, if you want to stay up with the uh, with the legend that is John Wayne Parr, there you go. And I, I feel like I'm aging like wine, so it's only going to get better. <laughs> of course. Well, it's great to sit down and chat. Great to catch up, um, and I very much look forward to seeing you back back in action next month. Thank you. Before we finish, Drew, how can people find you on social media and any any sponsors or anything like that you want to plug? The, the floor is yours. Oh, just at Drew Dober. Drew Dober at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, hit me up. Let me know what you think, whether it's good or bad. I love the messages. <laughs>